Hey, good morning. Pete from North Las Vegas. Anyway, I think it should be self-evident what we're getting ready to do here this morning. Thought about doing a short barrel and I changed my mind. Ended up with an 18 inch. And as we get further into the video, we'll get into a little bit more detail on some of this stuff. Glad they gave me a pen. All right, well, let's get started. Um, we're gonna talk about the barrel first. I'm gonna borescope it. We're gonna do some uh, head spacing checks with some go and no-go gauges. And uh, we're just gonna look it over uh, before we start the build. Okay, so why Criterion? Um, I think for the money, they're hard to beat. Um, the factory hand laps each barrel before it goes out the door. Uh, something else I should probably mention. I have no affiliation with them. I have no business dealings with them. I pay full price. So why did I pick a, another Criterion? This build here was a Criterion heavy barrel, one and eight twist wild chambering, chrome lined. And this thing's an absolute laser beam. Um, shoots sub MOA, it doesn't matter what I put in the rifle, it just shoots everything I put in it so far well. And because that one shot so well, I did these two builds on Criterion hybrid barrels. Now the hybrid barrel, it's a little thicker and heavier than uh, a medium contour. So it's not a government contour, it's not a pencil, it's, it's not a lightweight barrel, but it's not a heavy barrel either. It's, I guess, like I said, you call it medium contour. And all of these are one and eight twist. All of them are chrome lined. Um, this 18 inch here that we're looking at, it shoots sub MOA. Very accurate. And this is the 16 inch. And this is also a hybrid barrel. This one's a little bit more picky about ammunition. It'll shoot slightly above MOA, depending on what I run through it. Um, it will shoot sub MOA. It's just a little bit more picky about ammunition. All of these are rifle length gas systems. And I know a lot of people say that, you know, 16 inches don't run on a rifle length gas system. Yeah, they do. It depends on a barrel manufacturer, whether they uh, size the gas port correctly. Now I did have some failure to lock open on the last round on this particular build but that was because I was running an H1 buffer. As soon as I put a standard buffer back in this thing, it, it runs fine. So for those that say a 16 inch won't run on a rifle length gas system, no, that's not necessarily true. So anyway, because all of these rifles shoot MOA or sub MOA, um, that's why we went back with another Criterion barrel. Now these Criterions are not the most Expensive, but they're definitely not the cheapest either. Uh, Criterion was actually started by Krieger. And I think a lot of people are familiar with Krieger barrels. And he wanted to make a, a barrel that, you know, could compete with his high-end barrels, but at a more affordable price. And I think he was very, very successful doing that. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the actual barrel now. Okay, so it's got a nice chamfer. Um, I've looked at it, you know, up close and it's very symmetrical. It's very nicely done. Um, Criterion likes to run their threads all the way up against the shoulder. Um, some manufacturers will put a relief cut back here. And there's some pros and cons to that. Um, one of the cons to this is if you're using a jam nut, sometimes you'll have a a little bit bigger gap than you want to see back here and that's just cosmetic i mean 
So with the relief cut, it allows you to, to run your jam nut right up against the shoulder. But I haven't had any real issues that way with Criterion because they're pretty good at running their threads right up against the shoulder. And we already talked about the 223 1 and 8 twist. Uh, just a reminder, this is an 18 inch barrel. Uh, rifle length gas system. And it's a hybrid. So we talked about that earlier too. It's maybe a little bit heavier profile than, than your usual medium contour, but it is not a heavy barrel. So when I got this thing, not a scratch, not a nick on it. I mean, this thing was pristine. I got my bore, bore scope sitting over here. I'm gonna do that off camera. Um, plenty of bore scope videos. If I run into anything I don't like or anything that I don't think is pristine inside, then we'll definitely turn the, the camera on and show you. All right, well, let me get this barrel turned around a little bit and we'll, we'll look inside the chamber area. Okay, so I took a look inside the, uh, the chamber and uh, the chrome lining is impeccable. I mean, I couldn't find any defects. Okay, so I've run into my first problem. Um, I can't get it to uh, lock up on a go gauge on the head spacing. And I discovered the problem already. It's this, uh, you see the little button right there? That's the ejector. That's what kicks the round out after it's done. So I pushed down on that with a screwdriver and it will not go flush with the bolt face. So this is why I always head space with the ejector still in. So now that we've got a problem, I'm gonna take it apart, remove the ejector and see if uh, maybe there's some debris inside the hole or maybe the arrow made the spring too long. Um, so we'll get this apart and try to find out why that ejector is not going flush with the bolt face, but that's why this won't head space. And I also have uh, a couple of spare uh, bolts. So I'm gonna take this one apart real quick and see if it head spaces with that and then I'll let you know. Okay, so my spare my spare bolt did headspace on the on the go, and it would not headspace on the no go. So it's definitely a bolt problem, not a barrel problem. So, like I said in an earlier clip, I'm going to knock the pin out and see what's going on with that ejector because it will not go flush with the uh, with the face of the bolt. So there may be some debris in there. Maybe they left a spring too long. I don't know. But anyway, we'll get it apart and see if I can figure out what's going on with this. Okay, so you don't have to have one of these tools, but man, it sure makes life easier. And this will compress the uh, the ejector because it's a, it's a pretty stiff spring. And then when you go to put the pin back in or take the pin out, it, it just makes life a lot easier. So we're gonna use my tool here to compress that. We'll knock the pin out and then try to see what's going on with it. Okay, so I'm using a 1 16th that seems to fit in the hole pretty well. Uh, I'm going to do this part off camera because uh, YouTube uh, has some issues with showing too much. Um, they're not fully on board with the uh, First and Second Amendment uh, when, when it comes to legal activities. So let me do this part off camera and then we'll inspect the parts. Okay, so it headspace is fine with the uh, the ejector completely removed, and I think, I can't say for sure, but I was looking in the, the ejector hole with a, a flashlight, and it looks like there may be a chip in there. So I'm probably going to stick a drill bit in there and just kind of see if I can clean out the hole. But it will headspace now without the, uh, the ejector. I'll try to do this one-handed. So you can see it just locked up. Now we'll go with the no-go. No go. Okay, and that, that will not lock up. So it's not the barrel and it's not the actual bolt itself. There's something wrong with the uh, ejector hole or possibly the uh, spring is a little too long. Um, 
anyway like I said I'm gonna stick a drill bit into the ejector hole and clean that out see if there's a little bit of debris that's hanging it up it goes almost flush I would say it's probably sticking up sticking up maybe 20 thousandths from the bolt face so the actual uh, actual plunger pin won't go flush all right let me do that part off camera and see where we're at okay so um, you can probably see some little metallic chips on the front front of that bolt face and that I stuck this in here this drill bit smaller than the hole so I just kind of stuck it in there to see if anything was was stuck and when I pulled this back out we got some chips coming out of the hole so I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up and then put it back together and see see if the head spaces after that and I know a lot of people say that you're supposed to head space with the bolt completely tore apart I do not do that and this is why because if that ejector does not go flush with the bolt face you're not going to get a good head space so that's why I always head space with the ejector installed now I do remove the extractor I'm trying to head space with the extractor install is pretty difficult so anyway, let me get this thing cleaned up, put back together. We'll do all that off camera and uh, see if we get this thing fixed. Okay, so I found the problem. Um, not only was there a little bit of debris in the hole, but the bolt on the right, you can see the spring in the hole. On the left, um, they didn't drill the, the spring pocket enough. Here's my, my pin. Sorry about the camera work, but the, the pin stops right there so that they didn't finish the spring pocket hole. They, they didn't drill this out correctly. And so I'm going to send this bolt back to them. Probably just keep the carrier and just send the bolt. But uh, how stuff like that makes it out the door, arrow precision, kind of disappointing. All right, so the bolt carrier is nitrided, but it looks like for the most part, the bolt themselves are manganese phosphated. So I'm gonna use my spare bolt to continue the build. This one's going back to arrow. Like what the hell? Okay, so I took a really, really close look at the hole. And there's a little bit of daylight on the inside diameter of the hole to where you can see that they did drill us out, but they broke something off in there. And I thought maybe it was just some gunk and some debris. But uh, I took this titanium coated drill bit and whatever is in there, it won't touch it. It's broke off. I think it's part of a tool, uh, probably part of a drill bit or the end of a reamer or something that they broke off in there. So anyway, I'm gonna give him a call. This will be the uh, second time in two years that I've had to return an aero precision uh, bolt carrier. But anyway, like I said, I do have a, a spare one. So we'll press on with the build. I think I'm gonna end this video um, right here and we'll call this part one. And uh, we'll do a part two of uh, putting the barrel on and getting the handguard going.